According to Russian President Putin, cryptocurrency has a right to exist and is not worthless. Despite the fact that cryptocurrency has a right to exist, Russian President Vladimir Putin expressed optimism for the technology, stating that it might eventually find a place in the economy as an accumulation mechanism. Putin was speaking to CNBC's business news channel during an interview about energy that was streamed live on the Kremlin's website and afterwards made available in its entirety. He was asked during the interview about the possibility of using cryptocurrencies as a method of payment for oil export transactions. What, precisely, are cryptocurrency-backed contracts? To discuss this now would be premature. Because, while cryptocurrencies can be used as a medium of exchange in transactions, they are exceedingly volatile, Putin stated, according to Crypto News. A feasible alternative. Putin believes that transferring payments between locations via cryptocurrencies is a viable alternative. However, in my opinion, Bitcoin trading is still too early, particularly when it comes to transferring energy resources. The Russian leader addressed the media outlet as part of a Russian Energy Week event, which took place at a time when global natural gas and oil prices continue to rise. When questioned about his crypto-political opinions, he stated that everything has a right to exist, including cryptocurrencies. Putin stated that people will soon comprehend the potential of cryptocurrencies. Perhaps tokens will also serve as a form of accumulation in the future. We'll have to wait and see what happens in the market. For the time being, passing judgment on cryptocurrencies is premature, he remarked. When asked if crypto assets were worthless, he said no, despite the fact that they are electronic resources that are not yet backed by anything. Putin responded by asserting that cryptocurrencies do have intrinsic value. According to the Russian leader, the primary question is simply whether cryptocurrency can be used as a medium of exchange for purchasing and selling oil. That is the only subject I wish to discuss. Energy trading involves the usage of traditional payment units, which is particularly critical in the case of hydrocarbons. NFTs, a heinous open sea security weakness permitted criminals to grab cryptocurrency. Open sea. Rather than that, it's open season on cryptocurrency scammers. NFTs remain the topic of the crypto world, with bored apes, crypto punks, and other popular NFTs commanding thousands, and in some cases, millions of dollars. Whether you're a developer of non-fungible tokens or a shopper, you've almost certainly exchanged non-fungible tokens on OpenSea, the world's largest non-fungible token marketplace. However, its popularity is not without a cost. It draws cryptocurrency scammers salivating at the prospect of robbing naive, vulnerable members. Checkpoint, a cybersecurity research organization, discovered a serious weakness in the platform that exposed the personal information of many OpenSea members. Fortunately, OpenSea is aware of the issue and has taken steps to remedy the flaws in its security. Critical Security Issues in OpenSea OpenSea enables users to mint any digital artwork into NFTs as long as the file format is one of the following, JPG, PNG, GIF, SVG, MP4, WebM, MP3, WAV, OGG, GLB, or GLTF. Additionally, members must connect a cryptocurrency wallet, for example MetaMask, to the site in order to buy and sell NFTs. To pay for NFTs and or gas fees, users must load their wallets with cryptocurrencies, usually Ethereum. As such, 
The Checkpoint research team posed as a malicious actor and placed malicious code inside an SVG graphic aimed to dupe unsuspecting consumers into yielding their Bitcoin wallets in order to evaluate OpenSea's network security. Demonstrated in a video, the malevolent conduct was carried out successfully. Fortunately, this attack vector has been phased out of the NFT market. OpenSea and Checkpoint collaborated to ensure that this attack weakness was resolved, the study stated. Prior to addressing the vulnerability, Checkpoint researchers warned that hackers might steal cryptocurrency by tricking customers into clicking on fake wallet approval windows after clicking on third-party websites. For the uninitiated, Metamask will launch a wallet approval window prior to purchasing or minting an NFT on OpenSea, inviting you to allow or reject the transaction. This is considered normal behavior. However, if a wallet window appears unexpectedly after clicking on a third-party link, something is wrong. OpenSea does not require wallet authorization in order to see or click on third-party links. This type of conduct is quite suspicious, and users should avoid interacting with wallet approvals that are unrelated to OpenSea-related tasks according to the research. Investigators from Checkpoint advised NFT buyers and sellers on OpenSea to exercise caution when engaging with their Bitcoin wallets. It's all too easy to authorize transactions blindly, therefore it's critical to carefully evaluate the transaction and assess whether it's unusual or innocuous. If you have any reservations about the request, you should deny it, the article continued. Phishing is not the only method used by cryptocurrency scammers to take their victims' virtual assets. In Q3, nearly half of all unique active crypto wallets participated in a blockchain game. Over the last three months, in-game NFTs have produced $2.3 billion in revenue, with Axies being the top seller. According to new study, the number of crypto wallets engaging in blockchain games has increased significantly in recent months. According to DAP Radar's Q3 blockchain game report, the total number of unique active wallets associated with gaming decentralized applications hit 754,000 throughout the quarter. This accounts for about half of industry activity, with the blockchain sector generating an average of 1.54 million daily unique active wallets during a three-month period. Due to the fact that the unique active wallet metric relates to unique addresses that interact with a certain smart contract, it does not always correspond to daily active users. Gaming activity has increased significantly as a result of the play-to-earn movement and in-game non-fungible tokens. According to the report, these in-game NFT items produced $2.32 billion in sales during Q3, accounting for 22% of overall NFT trade volume during the period. With all the hoopla surrounding Ethereum collections such as CryptoPunks and Board Ape Yacht Club BAYC, it's possible that the importance of NFT in-game products was ignored. Between July and September, the NFT space saw around $10.67 billion in trading activity, an increase of slightly more than 700% over the previous quarter. The Axie Infinity Metaverse has been a major driver in the development of blockchain gaming. The game allows players to acquire and raise Axies, which are virtual creatures that may be utilized in player versus environment PvE, and player versus player PvP conflicts. Axie Infinity's trading volume increased to $2.08 billion in Q3 and is now at $2.55 billion in total volume. According to DAP Radar, there have been over 6.7 million sales to date, with the current 24-hour volume standing at $15.2 million. Axie Infinity is the top-selling collection by volume over the last 30 days, according to NFT tracker CryptoSlam, 
with $504 million in sales. Axie Infinity implemented staking for its native AXS token in late September, adding another layer of passive revenue to Axie's play to earn possibilities. The move sparked AXS trading and sent the stock to a record high of $155 on October 4. Over the last three months, the token has increased by 743%. Play-to-earn gaming organizations like Yield Guild Games, which generated $12.5 million in a 30-second Edo, initial DEX offering, in July, have also witnessed significant growth in recent months. The Guild has been actively expanding its ecosystem of play-to-earn games in recent months, including Thetan Arena, Cyball, Influence, Merit Circle, and Star Atlas. Increased acceptance of cryptocurrency and more specialized BNPL plans will set the pace for merchant trends. While the year has only a few weeks left, merchants and payment providers are already looking ahead to 2022 and determining what might be the next big innovation as the digital economy evolves. According to Lauren Craig, regional manager of the Americas at Checkout.com, 40% of merchants will consider accepting crypto as a currency in the next three years, but the industry has a long way to go before that happens on a large scale. However, as more merchants wish to accept cryptocurrency, I believe the industry will follow, Craig said. Additionally, she noted that the crypto space is still evolving, with innovations coming from both newcomers and established payment providers. Checkout.com serves a number of cryptocurrency-related clients and currently facilitates pay-ins and payouts for cryptocurrency exchanges. Craig said that in the short term, the focus is on the continued acceleration of e-commerce and the migration of more industries that were very card present heavy to digital sales, which may require merchants to seek new expertise and providers to optimize their operations. The approval ratio is significantly higher when you're in person, you expect that person to be able to pay after they walk away, Craig explained. Whereas in e-commerce, you do see that decline in approval ratio, optimization of those online transactions is critical for businesses with significantly increased online sales volumes. Craig anticipates a decline in credit card usage as a result of the rise of buy now, pay later, BNPL and other digital payment methods. According to a research, 29 million Americans used BNPL in the last year, with 48% of consumers rating them as more trustworthy than banks or credit card companies. I believe that people do it simply because they can, Craig stated. They want to be able to purchase something without having to consider it and pay later. However, as the user base expands, so do late payments, with one-third of users defaulting at some point, she said, and it is unclear how this will affect BNPL providers. Craig anticipates that as more providers enter the fray, businesses will begin to specialize by region and by niche, such as high-end fashion or electronics, especially as consumers begin to use BNPL for high-value purchases. I believe we will see it used in a much broader range of cases than we do now, she said. And I'd be very curious to see how these by now, pay later businesses differentiate themselves. Additionally, Checkout.com is working to expand its Payouts product. Payouts, which launched in April, enables merchants to send payments directly to recipients' credit cards and bank accounts. Craig stated that merchants may use whichever solution best suits their needs. According to Craig, companies in the gig economy and global remittance space are already benefiting from the new solution. When you consider gig economy merchants who operate in a variety of different regions, there are only a handful of people who can say that with a single integration. You can receive both pay-ins and payouts, she explained. And when you consider scalability, when you consider cost savings, in terms of development time and money spent on implementation, 
It's a very strategic way to assist a company in achieving a faster time to market. According to Checkout.com, the global real-time payments market was valued at more than $10 billion in 2020 and is expected to reach nearly $100 billion by 2028. Craig added that the ability to facilitate instant payouts enables very innovative use cases, such as insurance companies providing funds to customers more quickly following an incident, or airlines refunding travelers when a flight is delayed or cancelled instead of providing paper vouchers. There are numerous ways in which we can approach this product and increase the stickiness, happiness, and uniqueness of the customer experience, Craig said. Contributing to the growth of e-commerce To meet merchants' growing global digital needs, Checkout.com acquired Estonian software development firm Icefire earlier this year, adding 115 new developers in an effort to meet the company's goal of increasing technology and product employees by 60% by 2021. We're ensuring that our platforms are capable of handling the expansive growth of e-commerce and, ultimately, assisting our customers in their growth as much as possible," Craig explained. Among Checkout.com's primary areas of focus are improving merchant performance and expanding its fraud prevention offering to keep up with emerging trends. We do see fraud moving more into the e-commerce world, and they're going to find new and innovative ways to do so which means that PSP's payment service providers like ourselves must also be innovative in our approaches," Craig explained. Bitcoin continues to soar, a look at Bitcoin's hegemony over the cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin continues to dominate the cryptocurrency market, Express.co.uk spoke to experts to ascertain why other cryptocurrencies have lagged behind. Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency, and it has dominated the cryptocurrency market since its inception. Despite the growth of other cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin continues to outperform the competition, dominating the market by a wide margin. Why are Ethereum, Cardano, and Binance Coin lagging behind? Bitcoin is the world's first decentralized cryptocurrency, it was created anonymously in 2009 by a group of programmers. While the last decade has seen a flurry of new altcoins enter the crypto space, Bitcoin has remained the market leader. According to René Pomacel, CEO of Salamantex, Bitcoin's advantage of being the first cryptocurrency gave it a critical head start over other cryptocurrencies. This means that, while thousands of cryptocurrencies are now in circulation, none have garnered the level of recognition and coverage that Bitcoin has. Will other cryptocurrencies ever approach the price of Bitcoin? Bitcoin remains the most popular and well-known cryptocurrency on the market, with investors preferring Bitcoin over lesser-known altcoins. In time, some cryptos may catch up, Jeremy Chia, an associate professor of crypto finance and digital investment at Nottingham Business School, told Express.co.uk. However, it appears unlikely that altcoins will be able to close the gap with Bitcoin in the short term. Bitcoin's current price is £40,521.45 as of October 13 at 2 p.m., according to Coinbase. By comparison, the second market leader, Ethereum, was valued at just £2,549.81, followed by Binance at £340.69. No other cryptocurrency appears to come close to Bitcoin. The market leader continues to set the crypto market's trends, as its price rises and falls, other altcoins typically follow suit. Mr. Pomacel explained, Bitcoin's dominance means that investors view it as a barometer of the broader crypto market. In general, when the value of Bitcoin fluctuates, the rest of the market does as well. 
It is thus not uncommon for newer cryptocurrencies such as Dogecoin to exhibit similar price swings to Bitcoin. Although Bitcoin continues to set the crypto market's trends, there has been a recent surge in investment in altcoins such as Shiba Inu. Could this signal a shift in the fortunes of altcoins? Altcoins are gradually gaining investor acceptance, and as a result, their prices have begun to rise. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, has spoken out in favor of certain cryptos. His pro Shibu Inu and pro Dogecoin tweets have been credited with the rise of Shibu Inu and Dogecoin. Mr. Musk's tweet on February 4, 2021, Dogecoin is the people's cryptocurrency, caused the currency to surge by 50% in a single day. While on October 7, the crypto enthusiast's tweet about Shiba Inu resulted in a 40% increase in the cryptocurrency's price just hours after Mr. Musk's post. What is clear is that cryptocurrencies are edging closer to mainstream adoption, and as their popularity grows, their price rises, Mr. Pomesel stated. As more investors come out in support of altcoins, it appears as though their prices will begin to rise, but only time will tell whether they can catch up to Bitcoin. The first country to regulate cryptocurrency is preparing a broad crackdown. Estonia, which rode the initial wave of the digital currency revolution half a decade ago, is cracking down on the burgeoning industry, serving as a cautionary tale for would-be crypto hubs. With the Council of Europe slated to conduct a critical review of its anti-money laundering enforcement policies early next year, the government of the Baltic nation is considering tightening oversight of what has grown into a popular European centre for digital coin trading and associated infrastructure. We are going to strengthen our supervision and our approach to market entry, Mattis Maker, director of Estonia's Financial Intelligence Unit, said in an interview. Because we were the first country to regulate them, we provided a pathway for them to obtain a license, he explained. The FIU is a non-governmental organization affiliated with the finance ministry that has the authority to grant and revoke cryptocurrency licenses as part of its primary mission of combating money laundering. This is a critical issue for the Eurozones and NATO's 1.3 million members. The country is attempting to recover from a massive money laundering scandal that engulfed Dansk Bank's Estonian subsidiary in 2018 and involved the handling of 200 billion euros, 232 billion dollars, in suspicious transactions. Since then, authorities have revoked approximately 2,000 licenses for cryptocurrency exchanges and wallets, and the Estonian government is now considering new legislation to tighten overall oversight. This includes requirements for audited annual reports, increased capital levels, and transaction volume-based due diligence thresholds. Shattered Shitcoins Governments worldwide are debating how to regulate digital assets. While China has prohibited cryptocurrency transactions, El Salvador has designated bitcoins as legal tender. In April, Attitudes in Estonia deteriorated further when the country's security services launched an investigation into a company called Shitcoins.club. The firm, whose ATMs convert clients' physical banknotes into anonymous digital coins, was identified as a security risk, and the FIU revoked its license, which was held by a company called Virtual Planet. While the cryptocurrency businesses are registered in Estonia, their clientele is global. The United States, Venezuela, Russia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Brazil, and India are the sector's top customers, the FIU reported earlier this year. The firm's process transactions worth more than 40% of the Estonian banking sector's cross-border payments, or more than 20 billion euros, Maker told the Yesti Express newspaper in a separate interview. According to a 2020 study, 
only 10% of crypto service providers licensed in Estonia had bank accounts in the country. Around 40% banked with Lithuanian institutions and 20% with lenders in the United Kingdom. According to FIU chiefmaker, had Estonian authorities anticipated the risks associated with cryptocurrency companies in 2017, they would not have permitted such explosive growth. Without a doubt, the decision would have been different, he explained to Bloomberg. We are learning, but I want to emphasize that the entire world is learning as well. Coinbase's Complete Policy Framework Advocates for the Establishment of a Cryptocurrency Regulator According to a policy plan acquired by the Wall Street Journal, the largest U.S. cryptocurrency exchange wants Congress to prohibit the Securities and Exchange Commission from supervising the embryonic industry and instead create a separate regulator for digital assets. Coinbase Global which has been embroiled in a legal battle with U.S. regulators in recent months, intends to publish a document outlining suggestions for crypto regulation. It asserts that participants in the cryptocurrency market are unsure about whether federal bodies should oversee specific assets. Coinbase's move comes amid a broader conflict between the business and SEC chairman Gary Gensler, who has emerged as the primary source of friction for Bitcoin startups in recent months. He claims that numerous cryptocurrency exchanges are selling coins that violate investor protection regulations, which has dissuaded lawmakers from establishing a separate regulator. Coinbase stated in a blog post that its approach includes input from policymakers and took into account crypto's unique characteristics and value. We recognize that high-level recommendations do not become law overnight, and that they should not, writes Fire Shiazod, Coinbase's chief policy officer. However, they may contribute to the evolution of the debate in ways that benefit everyone, even members of Congress who are increasingly focused on this issue. Gensler stated during a congressional hearing last week, I would add a cautionary note, if Congress were to carve something out of the securities law, it would also undermine 90 years of economic prosperity and the 7,000-plus issuers now claiming, wait a minute, there is regulatory arbitrage. Coinbase's policy document argues for the polar opposite approach. It argues that digital assets should have a single designated regulator rather than facing oversight from various authorities such as the Securities and Exchange Commission or the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Laws enacted in the 1930s to permit effective monitoring of our financial markets could not have anticipated this technological change, Coinbase writes in its paper, referring to the era when the SEC was established. Congress should enact legislation recognizing that all digital assets, including digitally native equivalents of traditional financial assets, should be regulated under a new regulatory system. Coinbase's appeal comes as the Biden administration tightens control of digital assets, including currencies with a fixed exchange rate to the US dollar. Coinbase has been embroiled in a legal battle with the SEC, which contends that many digital assets are securities and should be subject to investor protection rules. In September, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong stated via a series of Twitter tweets that the SEC had threatened enforcement action against the company for attempting to launch an unregulated crypto lending scheme. Armstrong claimed the SEC's opposition to the product amounted to closed-door intimidation techniques. Coinbase stated that the agency will not explain why the program was deemed eligible for regulation. Coinbase acknowledged in a lengthy blog post that the SEC saw the product as a security and cited two Supreme Court judgments that defined debt and equity securities. Coinbase chose not to provide the product after previously stating that it would battle the SEC in court over it. Other regulators have accused Coinbase of misbehavior. In March, 
It agreed to pay $6.5 million to resolve CFTC allegations that it provided false information regarding its trading volumes. Coinbase stated at the time that its actions had had no adverse effect on clients and that it had cooperated with the CFTC's probe. According to the company's policy document, a single regulator would reduce the need for fragmented regulation by a slew of federal and state bodies with which crypto businesses must also contend. According to the Coinbase document, a private, industry-funded agency, overseen by the standalone government regulator, would monitor exchanges and dealers for indicators of manipulation or fraud. Coinbase's strategy for garnering support for a law that would regulate cryptocurrencies separately from other assets is unknown. Numerous Democrats in Congress, notably Senator Elizabeth Warren and Representative Sherrod Brown, have expressed reservations about the industry. I believe Coinbase's approach is naive, said Patrick McCarty, an adjunct professor of law at Georgetown University who offers classes on cryptocurrencies. However, I believe they recognize the impending restrictions. They are attempting to participate in the dialogue. China has reason to be afraid of Bitcoin. China's widespread crackdown has sparked outrage in the Bitcoin community. China has emerged as a prominent player in this new financial ecosystem, and Beijing's measures may signal the start of a global regulatory assault on cryptocurrencies and crypto assets. This would be regrettable. While cryptocurrencies have a number of faults, the underlying technology holds tremendous promise. China formally prohibited initial coin offerings, the cryptocurrency equivalent of firms' initial public sales of stock. It then took steps to restrict the dealings of Chinese financial institutions with cryptocurrencies and crypto assets. The most recent shift is far broader. All cryptocurrency transactions within the United States are currently forbidden. In principle, such transactions can be carried out without the knowledge of the government. However, few Chinese citizens or financial institutions are likely to take the risk of incurring the wrath of the authorities. Beijing's moves demonstrate how national governments and central banks are growing increasingly scared of cryptocurrencies undermining their financial systems and wreaking havoc in other ways. They have a legitimate reason to be concerned. Bitcoin, the original cryptocurrency, was originally used to facilitate unlawful transactions on the dark web and is now used to facilitate ransomware attack payoffs. Meanwhile, it has become clear that Bitcoin does not function well as a medium of exchange for everyday transactions. Bitcoin's value is volatile, and the Bitcoin network is incapable of processing a high volume of transactions swiftly or inexpensively. Rather than that, Bitcoin has devolved into a merely speculative digital financial instrument with no fundamental value. The entire value proposition of this item is predicated on its scarcity. In contrast to fiat currencies, which central banks can print at whim, the computer algorithm that regulates Bitcoin issuance puts a hard cap on the total number of digital coins that can be created. Governments are concerned about the prospect of households investing their money in crypto assets, leaving them vulnerable to a speculative bubble crash. China's government clearly did not want any part of this, particularly given the backlash it is already experiencing for attempting to reduce the speculative bubble in housing markets that it fostered. Beijing was also concerned about the impact of cryptocurrencies on its control over domestic payment systems. This issue has been demonstrated by the government's attack on Ant Financial and other tech companies that have consolidated their dominance over domestic retail payments, rendering central bank money increasingly meaningless. 
Beijing is particularly leery of emerging cryptocurrencies known as stablecoins, which retain a stable value by being backed by fiat currency reserves and may be used in place of the same fiat currencies for payment purposes. Another concern was that cryptocurrencies and stablecoins could be used to circumvent international financial flow limitations. These restrictions have been loosened in recent years. However, the government is concerned that unrestricted flows will make managing the renminbi's currency rate more difficult. In 2015-16, as China attempted to rein in enormous capital outflows and contain a sharp depreciation of the RMB, demand for Bitcoin increased within the country as individuals used it to transfer money out of the country and circumvent official regulations. Beijing increasingly views cryptocurrencies as vehicles for capital control evasion. China has also targeted Bitcoin mining, the process by which enormous quantities of processing power are dedicated to validating transactions on the cryptocurrencies network in exchange for Bitcoin rewards. Due to the simple availability of inexpensive energy and computer gear, such mining has grown in China, making it the global epicenter of activity. Environmental consequences have been substantial in terms of energy use and computer trash. With the government in the middle of a power crisis as it attempts to wean itself off non-renewable energy, it was evident that Bitcoin mining would not be permitted. Despite these significant limitations, the blockchain technology that powers Bitcoin may really have widespread benefits. Already, the technology is finding applications in other facets of finance. Without the use of traditional intermediaries such as lawyers and real estate agents, it will soon be possible to undertake a wide variety of transactions, including the purchase of a house or car. Additionally, the rise of cryptocurrencies has led central banks to develop digital counterparts to their own fiat currencies. China has already begun conducting these experiments. Japan and Sweden have also done so, and a number of additional countries are likely to do so in the near future. Cryptocurrency's future as financial assets is uncertain. However, the revolution they have sparked will make low-cost digital payments widely available. If permitted to develop further, these new technologies will also assist expand access to basic banking and financial services, including for low-income households and those underserved by established financial institutions. Advocates for cryptocurrency should take the appropriate lessons from China's crackdown. Rather of opposing regulation and oversight or saying that technology will enable the industry to self-police, they should collaborate with governments and regulators to develop effective legislation. As a result, the industry will gain increased credibility and stability. Wobi said we would leave China immediately after the government announced a ban on all crypto transactions. On September 24th, Wobi, the country's largest cryptocurrency exchange, held a shareholder meeting. Following the meeting, it was revealed that the company's shareholders had unanimously agreed to exit China. Shortly after the unveiling of the country's largest crypto exchange, the Chinese government revealed its intention to prohibit crypto transactions and services. Wobi began operations in China and quickly rose to prominence as a market leader. Despite increased regulatory inspection, the company has grown and established itself as a market leader. The decision was primarily motivated by China's current state of crypto regulation and the Chinese government's anti-crypto business position. For some time now, China has been conducting a huge crackdown on cryptocurrency exchanges and miners. A few months ago, the largest ever crackdown on cryptocurrency miners occurred, driving the country's largest cryptocurrency miners out. Wobi, one of the few significant cryptocurrency trading companies that remained in China, was also forced to depart. Wobi makes a choice. 
Huobi stated in its announcement that it has immediately suspended all account registration processes for new users in mainland China. Additionally, China's largest cryptocurrency exchange declared that it would terminate all Chinese users by the end of the year. Despite the fact that China has long sought to cleanse the country of crypto players, this is the most significant outcome of the Chinese government's efforts. Du Jun, one of the company's co-founders, stated that they previously spoke with the country's regulators to see how they could continue to offer trading services legally in the country. He stated, however, that there was no alternative and no room for discussion at the time. Representatives of the company stated that they now intend to expand globally and establish themselves as market leaders on a greater scale. For many years, enterprises such as Wobi hoped to discover a means to remain in the market, to avoid crossing the red lines and remaining in the local market. Indeed, Wobi has developed some links with the Chinese government over the last few years as it seeks to maintain a presence in the market. However, even with these ties, the company was unable to overcome the Chinese government's vehement opposition to the country's crypto players. Global Expansion at the Core The Chinese colossus recently revealed that they are now concentrating its efforts on worldwide expansion. They will follow in the footsteps of leading exchanges like as Binance and mining companies such as Bitmain, who have already relocated their operations outside of China. Wobi has been actively recruiting in countries such as Turkey and Brazil over the past few months. Additionally, the organization stated that they intend to hire up to 3,000 individuals this year. With over 10 million customers worldwide, including Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, the company aspires to expand even more. Wobi was founded in 2013 and has grown to become a market leader in China in a relatively short period of time. Wobi rapidly grew from a small Beijing startup to the world's most active Bitcoin exchange, enticing Chinese traders with commission-free transactions. However, there were a number of additional factors that contributed to Wobi's popularity as a cryptocurrency exchange. The fact that trading on this exchange was extremely straightforward was one of the primary factors. Along with a user-friendly interface, the Wobi trading bot and trade automation simplified the process of investing in cryptocurrencies for China's youthful tech-savvy population. This made crypto trading extremely accessible to locals, particularly those with regular, full-time jobs who desired an additional source of income. China's Battle for Crypto China's war on cryptocurrency has lasted an extended period of time. This year saw China's most severe crackdown on the cryptocurrency industry, resulting in the exodus of numerous crypto miners. Wobi began expanding its services in 2017 with the establishment of a Singapore subsidiary. According to the Chinese government's recent announcement on September 25, cryptocurrency transactions are now completely prohibited in China. This includes offshore exchange-provided services. Additionally, local laws prohibit platforms worldwide from hiring Chinese nationals in positions like as marketing, technology, or payment. According to a spokesperson for the Wobi Group, the company currently produces about 70% of its income outside of China. Additionally, 700 of Wobi's 2,300 employees work in exchange operations. Retail traders in China accounted for roughly 20% of Hubi's trading volume, according to the announcement. China conducted its largest ever crackdown on cryptocurrency earlier this year. As a result, the majority of the country's crypto miners were forced to relocate and seek new countries to conduct business. While some have established residence in neighboring nations, others are anticipated to expand their presence in Western countries.
We hope you enjoyed watching and listening to this video, please let us know your opinion in the comments area below. If you found our content useful, please like it and share it with your friends. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more crypto related contents.